spending some time this morning uh, with the executive. Is that is executive director is the proper title, right? That's right. Uh, Rebecca Schroeder is uh, with uh, Reclaim Idaho. And uh, I've heard you a lot. Uh, we've talked on the telephone, and mm-hmm. I've heard you a lot when Jeremy sits down with you and records Capital Update. And uh, and those are shorter segments. We've got a good half hour to speak with Rebecca this morning. And, uh, and your telephone calls, too, coming up a little bit later in the uh, in the half hour. Uh, but in the meantime, I do want to mention we're at 55, on our way probably to 72-ish today. I say that because it may be a little warmer, colder, wherever you are. Uh, trust me, it's not going to be too far off of that. Uh, Bill Colley with you, too, on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, logistically, the good start is what brings you to Twin Falls? Because obviously, uh, you know, well, we all like to think that everyone wants to come to Twin Falls just to visit and <laughs> do the tourist thing, but you're a little busier than that. And so you, you're here because of business. That's right. We're actually, uh, first of all, thanks for having me, Bill. It's nice to be here. Uh, we are on tour more than 20 stops around the state. We started way up at the Canadian border worked our way down through the panhandle. We're organizing uh, local communities around our new Invest in Idaho uh, initiative that we're hoping to put on the 2020 ballot for voters. Which is because there was a time, it seemed that after after Medicaid expansion, that I won't say you've been dormant. <laughs> that would be a very bad, in, 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 it would not be a correct description. But it, it seemed that you were just working on uh, sort of building grassroots, but you didn't really have anything planned for 2020. Well, we were working behind the scenes on this initiative all summer long. Um, there was a lot of careful thought and analysis and research put into this, uh, and we're really proud of, of what we now have. We also, through the summer, held our Idaho Speaks Town Hall series, just getting local folks talking you know, to their legislators, hopefully. A lot of legislators turned out. Um, about their right to propose ballot initiatives like Prop 2 Medicaid expansion or like this new Invest in Idaho initiative. So we were really uh, interested in keeping that at the top of the conversation. Specifically, what is Invest in Idaho? What, what, what's the goal? The, the goal with this initiative is to generate between 170 and 200 million annually to invest in our Idaho public education, uh, our, our students, our teachers, our schools, and our communities. You know, I, uh, I grew up in rural Idaho County, Kuski, Idaho, <laughs> up, in, up in the panhandle, and we just dro- drove through there, and we really are seeing a public education system in crisis. Uh, you know, a middle school just eight miles from where I grew up had just closed band has been cut, all of the extracurriculars. It's extremely difficult to recruit or retain a teacher, a certified teacher there. And and of course, living in Coeur d'Alene for the last 14 years, that has given me a front row seat to the teacher salary issues. You know, we don't have a teacher shortage in Idaho. We have plenty of teachers that live right in Coeur d'Alene that are fleeing across the border to Washington every morning for competitive salaries, classrooms that aren't overcrowded, technology, support staff. I just had an email this morning uh, from a teacher who pointed out, she said, this goes back to about 2010. We've been seeing this drain. And she said she had a friend who got her master's degree and then actually ended up making less uh, teaching the following year. And and, 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 and uh, these are stories, they may be anecdotal, but when you hear them, they, they tell, I think, a bigger picture of what, what has happened on the education front. Absolutely. You know, uh, I understand that salary isn't everything. We value our teachers so much. They work miracles with the resources that they have. We want to give them more to do, you know, we want to value them more. And that's exactly what this initiative is about. You know, people have been asking for these investments in education for a generation. We've seen 20 years of that those dollars being cut and cut and cut to the point that now we are, you know, 50th in the state in per pupil spending. I know that's not everything, but when we have schools that can't keep their lights on and the heat on um, because of budgetary concerns, then funding certainly is not nothing, right? So we feel that the initiative process was designed exactly for situations like this, like the Medicaid gap, uh, where the vast majority of Idahoans see a crisis mm-hmm. that the legislature either cannot or will not address. This has been going on too long, a generation of cuts, and we are not seeing the kind of movement on policy that we want to see. 
you know, we support a lot of the task force recommendations that are coming out of not only this current K through 12 task force, but in previous years, the problem is that the legislature is not acting on those recommendations. So it's time for the citizens of Idaho to step up, uh, take action so that we can throw a lifeline to these schools and, you know, support our communities. We've got, we've got to take a short break, but we've got more coming up with uh, Rebecca Schroeder. She's joining us from Reclaim Idaho. She's the executive director. And of course, too, she can take in the next 20 minutes uh, some of your questions and comments too as well. Uh, feel free to, to give us a shout if you've got something on your mind. And I do want to point out we've got a short break coming up. Uh, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Bill Colley with you too on Magic Valley this morning. Rebecca Schroeder joining us in studio this morning, executive director. Uh, she is with uh, Reclaim Idaho. And of course, she was pointing out to me it's not like the old quarterback, Jay Schrader. Uh, no, no, no. It, 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 <laughs> We don't want to mention him anyway. He wasn't all that successful. Raiders fans are still doing a slow burn about that. Uh, it's 843. We're at 54. Uh, Bill Colley with you, too, on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Hey, just quickly, we've got a telephone caller who's been trying to get through to us. We'll take the caller. Then we've got to talk a little bit about uh, some dollars and cents issues mm -hmm. coming up. Great. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air with Rebecca Schroeder. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm just calling in to kind of ask some questions that I, I need clarification on for the uh, the Reclaim Idaho stances on, on many things. So I've gone through your website, and I've looked at many causes that Reclaim Idaho pushes out there to the citizenry, and wondering why do they why do they tend to follow the progressive talking point of of national media? Things for the you know, uh, pushing taxes on the higher taxes on the so-called one percenters. Um, you know, expanding Medicare, Medicaid, and yet doing it through the masses rather than trying to push it through the legislature. I would also like to ask if, you know, if somebody presented uh, an initiative to to Reclaim Idaho on, say, banning abortion, is that something that Reclaim Idaho would be willing to go out there and push if that is a, if it's a citizen-driven um, initiative? Okay, a couple of questions. Yeah, I wrote down as much as I could, but first of all, you know, Reclaim Idaho is a nonpartisan group that has that was founded on three goals: um, healthcare for working families, uh, public education, and protection of public lands. So it it was actually formed up in Sandpoint. Folks got together to knock doors to try to pass a local le school levy, which they did. Um, we then looked at you know that strategy and issues statewide where we could employ that same door-to-door -door grassroots strategy. Um, the initiative process was designed for, like I said, these issues where we see a crisis that the legislature is not addressing. You know, we would love, I would love nothing more, Bill, than to not have to knock on 12,000 doors in Coeur d'Alene this year, like I did last year. Um, it's not the easy way to make well, laws. <laughs> it's not the easy way. You know, it's much easier to, to have one legislator write a bill and push it through the legislature. The problem is we're not seeing that. We didn't see that with the healthcare crisis. We're not seeing it with the education crisis. And the education crisis in Idaho has absolutely nothing to do with federal politics. This is a state issue. These are Idaho values. These are our kids, our teachers, and our communities. Um, so I guess our talking point, you know, I grew up in rural Idaho County. That's where my talking points I was just there talking to teachers and students describing the crisis. That's where my talking points are coming from, first of all. So um, what what else was I asked about the legislature? Uh, um, uh, uh, well, about it. He, he did he did specifically ask. Oh, oh, oh wait, I remember about, yes, if we were willing to take on other issues. So, you know, we addressed the Medicaid gap. Uh, we are now looking at our education crisis here. Um, we are going to stay focused on those three issues, consensus issues in Idaho, where we see a vast majority of citizens that are willing to, you know, act on a crisis. Uh, to, to follow up to that, we were talking off air and I mentioned I, I had a conversation with the mayor of Twin Falls the other day and I'm, I'm right of center, he's left of center, but we, we concluded we both want to do something to help the homeless population. Mm -hmm. He said, but you've only got really two choices, he was telling me. He said, you can pay the higher taxes or you can put more money on the plate when you go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So he said, your options are, are somewhat limited. 
And we also are dealing with a population in this valley that has been rejecting bond issues left and right. And uh, it, it seems to be coming, it'll, maybe it's a current public mood, maybe it'll be different in a year. And then just in the last couple of weeks, the state legislature said, well, maybe the counties can pick up some of, some of the share of Medicaid expansion. And horror of horrors, that means more property taxes. And I'm reminded of what Bernie Sanders was saying when he said people would be happy to pay more in taxes. It would be a privilege. This is this is the nub of all of this. I mean, I, I want to make sure everybody has health insurance. But on the other hand, I want to make sure I can pay my own bills, too. Uh, we're going to butt heads here at some point. Okay, here's the thing, Bill. The Constitution mandates the Idaho, the state of Idaho to provide a thorough, uniform K-12 through public education right. for our kids. So you're right. We have a couple ways to go about that. We can put, we can keep the burden on the property owners like we are now, an unfair burden on rural property owners to be, you know, even more um, specific, or we can try to shift that back to the state where it actually belongs. You know, when we have um, schools that are unable to operate because of failure to pass a levy, that is not a supplemental levy. You know, we want to put the supplemental back in supplemental levy and shift that burden back to the state where it belongs. Um, we don't think that it's fair the way that we're funding schools right now. Not only is it unfairly burdening property owners, but we're not doing enough. So we, we feel that this is a better way to not only adhere to our constitutional obligation, uh, but to shift that burden back to the state rather than the property owners. Um, in terms of the Medicaid expansion dollars, we wholeheartedly disagree that the counties should be shouldered with that burden. You know, that is passed on again mm -hmm. to property owners. You know, Governor Little thankfully made a statement in the meeting of counties that that was not the intention there is no need for that we have savings from other areas uh, and the interest on the millennium fund which was a tobacco um, endowment so this is posturing this is this is not necessary and we hope that you know the governor's recommendations are followed We've got a we've got another caller looking to join us. So we'll we'll take a caller or two. Uh, it is eight forty eight, and uh, Rebecca Schroeder is with us. She is the executive director of Reclaim Idaho. We're at fifty five on KLIX. And caller, you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. You know, I just want to make a statement. I think word logistics have meaning, and you know, this term "Reclaim Idaho" means that something was once and we want to bring it back i don't think that's true in this situation of this these people i think their wording should be plain idaho because what they're trying to do is everything that's against what us free people want i'll give you a chance to rebecca to uh, to respond again uh, i grew up in rural idaho county you know i am a generations deep idahoan and when I went to school, maybe it was more than 20 years ago, Bill, maybe, but I still remember a thing or two. And I, you know, we have seen more than 20 years of cuts to our education budget. So we really are, we want to reclaim that revenue. We want to reinvest it in our schools and communities. And maybe I've just lived here longer. I don't know. I'm 41. I don't know how old our caller is, but I am, I uh, <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> 57, I believe. I, I, I know the caller. Uh, uh, he's a little bit older than I am. I want to thank the caller for chiming in. Uh, speaking of the referendum process, uh, it, 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 this is not, you had support. I mean, speaking of Idaho County, you had one of the uh, Republicans from Idaho County. She was uh, very much on board with, uh, with blocking this notion that we should remove or restrict the referendum process. Yes. Uh, and so it, cr it cut across party lines. I had been under the impression it had gone away, though, but this may come back up come spring. So Indeed. we And that's why we were so keen to keep it in the minds of Idahoans, uh, that these are restrictions or attacks on our constitutional rights that we may very well see again. But um, it was interesting to see that this was not a partisan issue. You know, this is about our rights 
This is a process that has been guaranteed to us for more than 100 years mm -hmm. as a check on legislative power. Right, I could get upset with uh, Reclaim Idaho and say uh, Medicaid expansion, you know, but I realize as well that three fifths of the people in this county voted for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, pointing the fingers at somebody, I got to point it at my, my neighbors mm -hmm. because they voted for it. And, you know, and, and they obviously believed that we could afford it. Well, I think, uh, you know, we're a grassroots organization that, like I said, Bill, we've been out on the road in communities large and small all across the state. Um, people do support this issue. We're not taking this on. You know, we know what we're getting mm -hmm. into <laughs> now. We know what we're getting into, and we wouldn't take this on if we didn't know that we had the support um, of the majority of Idahoans on this issue. We've got another caller. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air. Uh, with uh, Rebecca and uh, Rebecca Schroeder. I want to make that clear. It's uh, it's a very straightforward pronunciation. <laughs> uh, I, I mentioned earlier, if you're just joining us, I didn't want to confuse it with a journeyman quarterback who played in the NFL by the name of Jay Schrader, but you're only 41. You wouldn't remember him. Uh, you know, my husband's a Broncos fan, so. Yeah, he, he might remember. <laughs> uh, we've got a caller. Caller, you're next. You're on the air on KLIX. Caller, go ahead. All right, I'll give you the number out again. It's 208-736-0300, 208-736-0300. What do you need to do to get this on the ballot uh, again? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, obviously, you have a template now, uh, but I, I, this is the thing when we're seeing all of these bond issues go down. I wonder if perhaps your success could work against you now in the future. Well, you know, we learned a lot about how to put something on the ballot in the, you know, in the last cycle. The rules are the same to qualify something for the ballot. So that means we need 6% of registered voters mm -hmm. across the state and 6% in 18 different districts. So that's the distribution requirement. So that means we need 55,057 valid signatures if we are to put this uh, on the ballot in 2020. Um, we may have some, you know, we, we understand that we're going to have some difficult conversations and that we will have to message a little differently. You know, we had the advantage with Medicaid of having it enacted in more than 30 states right. by the time we started talking about it with Idahoans here. This is, uh, you know, this is our novel proposal that we're excited. Um, you know, we've been nothing but encouraged as we've gone around the state to see seasoned Medicaid volunteers showing up for these organizing meetings, as well as new folks that are motivated by this issue, retired teachers, parents, school board members um, from all parties. So we're seeing manifest what, you know, what we knew and, and what we hope to see when we launch this. And, and we might want to point out too, as well, that you have, even though the callers, of course, have, have been pretty blunt in some cases about this, you have attracted just because of the voting totals on Prop Two, you have attracted some Republicans on some of these issues. You had to, I mm -hmm. mean, just registration-wise, you had to. Uh, but this is what I mean about maybe people after they they're now seeing the potential fallout from what it will cost for Medicaid expansion or what it could maybe the better the projections what it could cost. Maybe all of a sudden now they think, gee, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And that's what I mean. This could harm you in, in future efforts to to get a measure passed. You know, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you on that one, Bill, because Medicaid expansion is 90% federally funded. And we are Which just... Which comes a, from me, by the way. Right. But we are paying those taxes right now and not getting the health care for it. So we, once we start getting, you know, in January, just a, a few short months, we're going to have tens of thousands of Idahoans who are seeing a doctor for maybe the first time in their adult lives. And we anticipate huge savings from well, like could, CAT but, funds and indigent care funds. Nothing's really been implemented yet. As I no, understand. no, no. It's uh, we're enrolling in November Okay. in January. Um, you know, if you think Medicaid expansion was popular with 61% of the vote when it passed, wait until people actually get their health care bill. It's going to be more popular than ever. And we will see savings. Preventative managed care is both cheaper and better for patients than emergency but room th care. this money from the federal government wasn't exactly sitting on a shelf waiting for Idaho to come pick it up. Uh, uh, well, we were paying into that fund um, for more than six years and just not taking 
the match from the federal government back into Idaho. We were leaving more than $400 million on the table. That's exactly what we were doing, Bill. we got a couple of minutes to go before we wrap up. Uh, just, again, you're, you're, you're in the area because you're going to be having an opportunity for people to talk about another proposition that will be coming up in 2020. Yes. And, 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 well, it should be coming up. My guess is it's probably, as I said, the template's there. You, you know how to do this now. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly for details, what should they know about your visit in this area? Well, we're going to go through uh, the meat and potatoes of the initiative itself, which I have here. So just talk through the policy. Uh, and then we're going to talk about our strategy to work, you know, really smart, um, right. utilize what we learned and get our local uh, team here up and running for our big signature launch. We anticipate is, having the petition back by mid-October. Is there a public meeting attending all of this? We, yes, uh, you're invited, you know, <laughs> <laughs> come join us. Um, it's at our volunteer treasurer's house. So um, we have been advertising and inviting folks. Um, it's you can this find evening it on the web. Uh, yes, it's right. on um, our social media, on our website, reclaimidaho.org. Yes. And uh, are you seeing bigger crowds while you're doing this? You know, it depends on where we're going, but sometimes we see the biggest crowds in the smallest places um, because they're hurting the most. Because, you know, a year and a half ago, a lot of people never heard of Reclaim Idaho. Mm -hmm. And by golly, they sure knew about Reclaim Idaho that first Wednesday in November after the election. Well, like I said, we're encouraged by, you know, we have already uh, more than 250 people who've committed to collecting signatures for this new effort from more than 40 different towns around the state, you know, that have signed up either through our website or through these organizing meetings. So uh, don't get me wrong. It feels like we're standing at the bottom of a mountain again here. You know, this is no easy task, um, but we want to use what we learned and we want to build, you know, to, to, to make it as easy as we can on the volunteers that are sacrificing their time and energy. Well, I'm glad you stopped by today and uh, we'll be talking again <laughs> soon. Uh, this is going to gather a, a lot of, uh, in the newspaper business, what they used to call ink before we get to election <laughs> day 2020. And I uh, will certainly be making a lot of sound about it here on radio too. But we want to thank Rebecca for dropping by today. Uh, Rebecca Schroeder is the executive director of Reclaim Idaho, and we've got a break for 9 o'clock news. That's on the way in just a moment. And then one more hour of Magic Valley this morning with Bill Colley.